need to grab my coffee because I need the energy. I'm proud of you, you little bowling pin. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, hi! Today I'm going to be doing a cocktail video. Let's get keen. Um, I know you weren't expecting it because I said I wasn't going to do cocktail videos anymore. But here we are, right now, I'm doing a cocktail video. Also, I just got my hair done, so I am looking a little bit more fresher than usual. I know, you don't have to point it out. Yeah, I just went a little bit more blonder, a little bit more ashy, I guess. Also, I just want to give you guys a little sneak peek of some upcoming merch that I have going on at the minute. This is one of the designs here, and it's also... Oh. Very nice. On the back, I think it's super cute, but I'm still waiting for a lot of pieces in the mail. So once I get all my little bits and bobs, I will make a video and announce my new merch. But for now, it's a sneak peek. It's on its way, and I'm honestly very, very excited. Why did my computer just turn on randomly? Shh, go to sleep. I know I said I wasn't going to make bird content, but you know what? I kind of enjoy it. I don't want to make it all the time because I do get burnt out very easily. I figured like once every two months or something, I might make a bird advice video. I just feel like when it comes to birds, they don't don't really get the requirements that they deserve. I feel like birds are very thrown under the bus when it comes to like proper care. I feel like I've got the platform to kind of spread the awareness, so I'm gonna do it, just not all the time. So today I wanted to create a video on the importance of bird proofing your house and basically just going through all the common household dangers that are very harmful to your little feathered friend. All right, listen up. There are already so many things to research when you get a bird, like nutritional diets, proper cage requirements, hormones, all that kind of stuff. And I have covered those other topics in my other cockatiel videos, so you should definitely go check them out if you haven't already. But yeah, today I will be touching on the household dangers and the importance of educating yourself, not only for you, but for your feathered friend. You might be saying goodbye to some very loved stuff after this video, so... I don't make the rules, it's just, it is what it is. Also, before we start, let me just say that I'm not a professional in any single way. I'm just a girl on the internet who has love for cockatiels, and I've also owned cockatiels throughout my life. So I'm here to share my experiences with you. Okay, now before we get into the nitty gritty of the video, I just want to say that you should always 100% be supervising your cockatiels when they are out of their cage. The things that I'm about to list today can be avoided when you supervise your birds. So don't leave them out unless you've actually gone and bird-proofed your whole like room that they're in. that I'm going to talk about today is non-stick coating. Now, I'm sure that you have heard of this topic before. Owning a bird, you would have to because it's probably the most common household danger that we all have or have all previously owned. So, people suspect that non-stick appliances are okay unless they're overheated, which is when the toxic fumes release into the air, but that is not true. I wouldn't trust that theory around myself or my feathered friend. Like, I just, it feels wrong. The fumes that are actually released when non-stick coating is heated up are very toxic and very fatal. Cockatiels have a very sensitive and delicate respiratory system so they are unable to clear out the toxic fumes like we can through coughing and exhaling. They can't do that unfortunately. No, the fumes that are released when non-stick coating is heated up can potentially shorten the lifespan of your bird or even kill them. So even if your bird is up the other end of the house they're still not safe. So I wouldn't recommend using non-stick anything. It's just not worth the risk. Teflon is a very common name that you may hear when it comes to non-stick coating. So I would just avoid that together. I've actually heard that Teflon is not great for us. So imagine what it's like for our birds. So when you're buying new pots and pans, I always look out for PFOA and PTFE free things. That's very, very important. Or you can buy alternative materials like stainless steel, aluminium, cast iron, or enamel cookware. Yeah, always make sure that it's PFOA and PTFE free. If it doesn't say that, then I just wouldn't trust it. Now, pots and pans aren't the only thing that contain non-stick coating, and this is what people aren't very aware of. I'm going to read a couple of things that could contain non-stick coating, and you just have to be very wary when you're buying these things. So we've got bakeware, stove drip pans, self-cleaning oven. Now this, don't ever use the self-cleaning option because this is known to kill birds in a matter of seconds. Electric fry pans, woks, deep fryers, irons, curling irons, blow dryers, space heat heaters and certain types of heat lamps and light bulbs. So yeah, just always make sure that when you're buying new things, make sure that they state that they are PTFE free. 
Now another household hazard to look out for is scents. Now this might break some hearts because if you are a candle or diffuser lover or basically anyone that loves strong smelling things, you might have to say goodbye to these. Lovely smelling candles and diffusers can make your bird very, very sick and can even cause death. So I recommend if you have any candles near the room that your bird is in, I would either eliminate them completely or just get them to the other side of the house. Never burn them, never use them, just just let them sit there. Like for example, I own candles, but it's purely for decorative purposes. I never burn them. I don't even open my candles. They're just there. And I have one diffuser in my house and it's in the toilet, which is the other end of the house and the toilet door is always closed. Also, if I'm like going out to an event or something, I'll go to the bathroom, close the door and turn the fan on. And that's where I'll use like my dry shampoo or my perfumes, all that kind of good smelling stuff. And I won't return back to my room until I'm back from the night out. Of course, you don't have to get rid of your good smelling perfumes, but just never spray anything aerosol or fumy in the room that your birds live in. So I'm just going to list a few things to be wary of once again. So mothballs, pesticides, hairsprays, perfumes, nail polish remover, bleach, permanent markers, air fresheners. So yeah, just make sure that the room that your birds live in is well ventilated and to never use the things that I mentioned in the same room as your birds. Ventilated or not, it's just not good for them altogether. So this thing behind me here is a HEPA filtered air purifier and I would recommend getting one of these bad boys for your bird room. Not only does it help maintain the cockatiel dust and dander, which is amazing for me, but it also helps purify the air and it catches any toxins that might leak in. It doesn't catch them all, but it just helps the room ventilate that little bit more and it's just really, really healthy for me and my birds. So yeah, I'll link that down below, but if you are looking for an air purifier, make sure that it is H-E-P-A filtered. There is a theme happening here and basically I'm going to talk about chemicals now. Obviously chemicals that you use to clean your house are a no-go. Never use them in the same room as your birds because once again it's too overpowering for them and they just won't be able. There's so much dust everywhere. Charlie. Sorry, not sorry. They just won't be able to filter it through their tiny little lungs. I only recommend using them in a very far away room. I wouldn't use chemicals in your bird room. I wouldn't even use chemicals in the next room. A lot of the scents that chemicals use are very overpowering like you might be able to and there might be alternatives that I don't know of but I just wouldn't risk it. I recommend using hot water and vinegar. That solution there helps get rid of bacteria and clean surfaces. So if you are looking for an alternative, hot water and vinegar works really, really well. And I have found out from you guys in the comments that you can actually use it on the bird cage and it doesn't harm them. So the more you know, I didn't know that. Yeah, you can't use chemicals or you can't use wipes on your bird cage or in the same room. It's just, it's just too overpowering. It's not good for them. Obviously you can't replace things like toilet cleaner and dishwashing liquid that I'm aware of but I would just try and find like the least toxic product you can and use that in consideration. I wouldn't use it like all the time and I'll just make sure obviously that your bird's room is well ventilated once again when you decide to clean the house kind of thing. Instead of air freshener I've actually heard that you can boil orange peels and it will give this like fruity aroma to your house. I haven't actually tried it but apparently it's a thing so, so I'll list some products once again that you should avoid like carpet cleaner and fresheners, bleach, pesticides and air fresheners. I won't talk about this too much because there's not too much to talk about, but new carpet backing and paneling actually contains a toxin that is very lethal to our birds. So if you are going through renovations or you've just brought a new home, I would make someone babysit or bird sit just until you can't smell the fumes anymore. Paint varnish and wallpaper paste is actually very lethal as well. So once again, if you're planning on painting a room or you've just got a brand new house that's probably been freshly painted within the last couple of weeks, I would get someone to bird sit your bird until you can no longer smell the fumes. That is definitely the most safest way to do that. So saliva from humans, dogs, and cats, or any other kind of carnivore slash omnivore animal is actually very toxic to birds. Once again, you guessed it. That means not letting animals lick your birds. I don't even know why I would have to mention that, but I'm sure there's someone out there letting their dog lick their bird and you gotta stop right now. Don't allow your bird to eat out of your mouth and definitely don't allow your bird to get in your mouth. I just don't do it, don't do it. So yeah, all that can put them at risk of a deadly bacterial infection, which is not good. We don't wanna even risk that. Also, if your bird has any physical interaction with a cat, I I would take them to an avarian vet 
ASAP because cats have a very dangerous bacteria in their claws and their saliva that is lethal to birds. That's actually how I lost one of my birds in the past. And if you've been following me for a while, you know the story. Don't let your cats near birds. Don't even think about it. Not even for a cute video because if the slightest accident happens, like it's just known that cats kill birds. Shouldn't even be a discussion. Like let's just not go there. <laughs> Metal poisoning, or I'm gonna say HMP, is a very scary and serious topic that we're gonna talk about today. And it's also one of the many reasons that you should always supervise your birds when they are out of their cage. So heavy metal poisoning can be caused from birds chewing or destroying things such as metal hardware, wires, coat hangers, pennies, wire stems on artificial flowers, hooks, stained glass items, chipped paint, costume jewelry, zipper teeth, or duct tape are just to name a few. I highly recommend educating yourself on this matter because it's very lethal to your birds if they actually ingest any of the things that I have just mentioned. Um, and although I've never witnessed HMP, it can happen because birds, for example, like this one right here, this little, this little chicken there, she's chewing my makeup tray. So symptoms of HMP include inability to fly, weakness, red droppings, vomiting, and respiratory distress. And I recommend taking them to a vet ASAP if you notice any of those symptoms. Poor Charlie's going through a molt and she looks so awkward. Like she looks very, very dodgy. Must be such a hard time growing those new feathers. I'm proud of you, you little bowling pin. topic before but I'm just going to touch on it again because it's very very important and I also feel like it's very skipped over when it comes to like the awareness of dangers in the house. Did that make sense? Probably not but like welcome to my channel. I don't make sense here. If you are a plant queen like myself you are probably going to have to invest in some fake plants if you want to get a cockatiel. I'm just saying because most household plants that you know and love are very, very toxic to birds. Once again, we can't have any fun with you around. Basically, if they ingest or even like bite the leaf, it can kill them very, very fast. I once had to learn the hard way about this when I was younger, it freaking sucked. So there are so many lists on the internet to provide what is a safe plant and what is a toxic plant. I know that if a bird ingests too much of a safe plant, they can end up getting diarrhea. So I would just keep that in mind as well. And also you do have to be wary of the soil in potted plants can have fertilizer, fungi, or pesticides in it, which can be very fatal to your bird. Just don't let your birds play in the soil. I would be covering that soil with like pebbles. All right, so those are the main topics that I'm gonna talk about today, but I do have some honorable mentions. We're just going to talk about those. They don't really have a specific topic. So I'm just going to blurt here for a second. Make sure that your toilet bowl lid is put down all the time and that the toilet door is closed because birds can tend to fly out of their designated room. And if an accident was to occur, your bird gets stuck in the toilet bowl and they can't get out because of the slippery surface. So they can drown. Never have your birds in the kitchen when you're cooking. There's just way too many risks to even think about, for example, your You've got boiling pots of water that your bird can potentially land in. You know, all those hot surfaces, your bird will probably want to land on them. I just wouldn't risk it. Also, you might be cutting up foods that are actually toxic to them and just all the fumes that can be created when you're cooking up a storm. All in all, I just wouldn't have your birds in the kitchen while you're cooking. They can wait half an hour or an hour while you're cooking. Just put them away and get them out once you're done eating, it's fine. Always, always turn your ceiling fans off when your birds are out of their cage. Turn them off before you even think about getting your birds out of the cage. Think about it, the blades are spinning very fast, your birds actually can't see the blades in time to slow down, and they can break their neck, their wings, get a concussion, like it's just not good. If you have ceiling fans, turn them off before you get your birds out of the cage, even if it's in another room. Birds will always want to chew cords, I don't know why, but they're just programmed that way. So make sure that they don't chew on cords or electrical wires because they can get electrocuted, which is once again, not ideal. Um, and then last little mention is carbon monoxide is very, very dangerous to not only us, but also our birds. So I would recommend that you get a carbon monoxide detector in your home so you can detect any leaks. 
I don't know how well your bird would survive a carbon monoxide leak. Like we get very sick from that. So your bird, I'm sure, would not be able to survive that. And those are just to name a few. There are many, many other dangers to look out for. So of course, I'm gonna be leaving the links down below where you can read up all about them. I did mention a good bunch today, but there's still things that I missed out on. So I do encourage you to do your own research. It's very important for this little thing here. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you learned something today or if not found this video a little bit helpful. If I help one person today, I will be very, very, very happy. Thank you so much guys for sticking around. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below so you can let me know that you enjoy my content and so you don't miss out on these cuties every Friday. I try and upload every Friday. I'm, I'm trying my best. Anyway guys, without further ado, I'm going to love you and leave you and I will see you in my next video next Friday. So, ciao for now. Say that.